It's actually two tacos that I sculpted all the stuff that's in them, which was really fun. And then it's a bottle of Ortega that's pouring taco sauce over the tacos. And then I've also got just a couple jalapeno slices and some little wine wedges on the side of the plate. I love this. I think they're just so cute and they're surprisingly realistic and anything that's extreme and 3D is right in my family. So I hope you guys love this as much as I do. And don't forget to click subscribe to see all my future videos as well. Bye! So we're going to begin with an overlay of Milky White acrylic. You can use Milky White or like a straight up um, pure white if you want. It's just kind of think of it as like a plate. You want a plate color in the background. So then after we have that sculpted, either one of those wouldn't necessarily require an encapsulation because they're both a very strong color. Then we can file the nail into shape with our e-file and now we get to do all the fun stuff. So the first thing I sculpted are my two um, taco shells. So I'm going to pat out some warm gold acrylic into circles on a nail form backing. And I'm trying to do these about the same time so that they're at the same level of cured, just kind of as it goes, and then fold that nail form backing into a nice curve so that it gives th your little tortilla shells that, you know, U-shaped taco. So now after those are just kind of set to the side so that they can fully cure and get nice and hard, we're going to do all of our taco fixings on a separate nail form backing. So I'm going to begin with some jalapeno slices. You can really start anywhere and do whichever thing you want first to do these little jalapenos, sculpt a circle, and then after that circle has started to cure up a little bit, I did two at a time just to kind of give myself some nice timing. I'm going to take the pokey end of a floss pick and poke some holes in it. That time I actually waited a little bit too long. Um, but doing that gives it kind of that jalapeno look. You want the middle of your little jalapeno to stay pretty, you know, big and firm, but then have those little breaks in it around the edge. So you can make your jalapenos different sizes. I know that um, when you're sculpting these jalapenos, there's different colors of jalapeno that you can use necessarily, but they do have a slightly lighter color in the middle and we'll get to that later, but just leave them on your nail form backing. So now we're going to take a double dipped bead of green and white acrylic and we're going to kind of swirl that together. You can make a few of them if you want. First dip into the white and then go into the green, but then take your nail form, um, or not your nail form backing, take your floss pick and you're just gonna kind of like scribble around in that wet acrylic to kind of give it the shape of lettuce like a uh, shredded lettuce and it doesn't have to be perfect it's really kind of sloppy as best in that particular circumstance so just have fun with it and go kind of crazy so now grabbing a very bright uh, bright green acrylic we're going to be sculpting our two lime wedges so I'm going to do the first one and then I'm going to do the second one when you're sculpting these you want your lime wedges to have um, a very narrow on the straight edge you want them to be quite narrow and then get thicker as they reach the bottom of that curved edge to give them like they're a triangular wedge of lime. I'm even going to add a second coat of acrylic to really build up that curved side to give it some nice height. You want these to be pleasantly 3D so that they do look like, you know, the fruit you're trying to sculpt. Kind of build that other side up, pat it out. Doesn't have to be perfect, but you know, just the more details you can add, why not? The next thing we're going to do is a very long strip of orange acrylic that is incredibly thin. And this is going to be for our cheese. And don't worry that it's one long piece because it's so thin that it's easy, easily going to snap apart later. So if you just make one long strip, you can break it into individual little cheese sections later into like little cheese strips. So we've got our one or our, our one, or we're going to do three long pieces of our yellow cheese, which is actually orange. And then once you have that done, you have all of these wonderful pieces of cheese, you can move on to the next section and we're going to be sculpting our taco meat. So I'm going to take two colors of brown acrylic and place them down on the nail form backing, very similar to how I did my lettuce, but instead of patting it out thin, leave it into pretty nice thick sections of the acrylic. And then I'm going to take the dotting tool that's on the back of my 3D brush. I'm just going to sort of swirl around the acrylic and kind of mess it up so that it gets into little taco meat type of sections. And again, no perfection required here. The next thing is we're going to do some little red squares for diced tomato. So just take and place down a bunch of sections of some red acrylic and then press them into squares. Again, no perfection needed. They don't have to be the same size. They don't even really have to be squares. After you have a bunch of those done, take a shade of white acrylic. A milky weight is perfect. And you're going to want to just brighten up the center of each of your jalapeno slices. That's why I said just leave them there because we're not done with them. But once they have fully set up before, then you can add that little bit of lighter color. 
Now that your taco fixings are all ready, just leave that nail form backing on the side and we're going to sculpt our base of the bottle of Ortega on a different nail form backing. Lots of nail form backings required for this particular design. So we're going to just, like I said, sculpt a base of it, just the very basic shape of the bottle. You don't have to go crazy with it. It doesn't have to be perfect. I actually filed this bottle later. So if it's a little bit, you know, wonky or off center, it's fine. The better or the closer it gets to being the right shape, the better, but you know, there's always ways to fix things, so don't worry about it too much. After that's done, you can glue a piece of wire onto one of the sides of the bottle, and then taking more of that scarlet red acrylic, we're going to be building up the shape of the bottle. And for me, I found that this particular bottle I don't know if it was just the way the shape was. I couldn't get it to look perfect without filing it. So eventually I came to the conclusion that I was going to file it. And that was that, which actually works out well because I think the results are just a little bit smoother when you file it. It just gives it more of a complete finished look. So if you build up your acrylic and it ends up being to, you know, getting too much, too big, too chunky, anything along those lines, that's fine because it's really not that, you know, not that hard, but keep adding layers back and forth from side to side. When you are adding layers from side to side, do try to do, you know, keep it even. So put, you know, a layer on one side and then flip it over and do the other side to try to keep it as even and symmetrical from side to side as possible. Again, you know, no perfection required. What happens happens and it's fine. So just keep adding all of these layers until you're happy with it, you know, fairly happy with it at least. And then I'm going to take my e-file and I'm going to be filing it into shape. And when I'm doing this, the bit I'm using is a coarse grit bit and it is a narrow cone shaped or I think this one isn't really an under the nail cleaner bit, but it's one that would work as an under the nail cleaner bit. Or if you do have an actual under the nail cleaner bit, that one would work well too. And we're just going to kind of take and smooth everything out. My e-file speed is relatively low. I would say it's around 10,000 RPMs. If you are somebody that actually wants to know RPMs, that's a, you know, my guesstimate as to what it is, fairly, fairly low. And then after I have that done, I'm going to take a hand file and just finish file it a little bit. It just gets a little bit more smooth that way. Once that's done, I'm going to sculpt a rim around the top of the bottle with more of my scarlet red acrylic, just so it has all glass bottles have that, you know, sharper or that thicker rim around the very top of the bottle. So we're going to do that and just carry that acrylic around the edge, going all the way around, just like so. Once that has been completed, we can start assembling our tacos with a lot of nail glue. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to glue my two taco shells onto the nail. One of them is going to be up and one of them is going to be like it tipped over or at least partially tipped over is kind of laying down on its side. And then take your take your tacos, you know, your, all of your filling, and you're going to do it just, you know, layer by layer. So I started out with my taco meat. I'm going to be doing a layer of all of those brown bits, and then I'm going to do it in the other taco and just filling it in. After you do that, that's like your bulkiest section. And then I'm going to do my lettuce and do this in a way that you would typically fill a taco. So, I mean, you know, there's usually like a standard order of events and layering procedure that goes with a taco. And if you're somebody that has like a particular thing that you do, like for me, I don't eat, you know, traditional tacos. I just eat fish tacos. I actually love fish tacos, but, um, so for me, if I were to actually build this and do it like my style of taco, I would have my pieces of grilled fish and then some, maybe some uh, cabbage in it or different things. Mango salsa is amazing. So you can kind of personalize this design to fit your personal preferences and you can make them the tacos that you would like, even if it's got weird stuff in it, you know, no, no harm in doing it your way. The one thing that I went back and forth about doing and then I decided I had enough green things is that I thought some avocado would be really nice to have in there. But once you get your tacos about, you know, three quarters of the way filled, you're going to want to glue in your Ortega bottle and then secure it with some clear acrylic. And then you can start breaking up some pieces of cheese and gluing cheese around where that piece of wire goes into the nail or goes into the taco and just fill it in with all of these other pieces. Make sure that as you're laying down your pieces of cheese, you do get enough glue on them so that they stick. Glue in some of your little jalapeno slices, saving a few for the nail. The jalapeno slices are hands down my favorite element of this design. I absolutely love jalapenos and so I was super excited to make them and they were so easy and they turned out so cute. 
I'm going to glue my lime wedges on one side of my plate and then my little jalapeno slices on the other side. And once all of that is done, your taco is pretty much complete. But we are going to paint a logo on our bottle of Ortega. So to do this, I'm going to start with some blue acrylic paint and I'm going to paint the base of the label. And then there's a little bit of a texture that's actually built into the glass of the Ortega bottle. But since we're not sculpting in all of that little detail and it wouldn't show up as well even if we did, I'm going to do this with a darker shade of red paint and add first a zigzag and then fill in between the little points of the zigzag zigzag with some polka dots and do that all the way around the neck of the bottle. So don't just do that on the front. You do want to do that all the way 360 both sides. The other thing is that there are different kinds of Ortega or even just taco sauce you could, or, you know, maybe you want to put ranch dressing on your tacos. I don't know. You could do all sorts of different kinds of fun sauce bottles for this. So then after we have those little, little zigzag going, I'm going to fill in the lower portion of my little logo with brown paint. And then I'm going to do some yellow outlines around it kind of right inside the blue line. You don't want to do all the way around the outside of it. You want to leave a little bit of a blue border. And then once that's done, then you can write the word Ortega with that same yellow paint, very small writing. And so the one thing, if this is too small for you to write it, you can kind of abbreviate it. You could switch up the logo. You can just change things. You don't have to do it exactly how it is. You can, you know, make some creative adjustments so that it will, you know, maybe be a little bit bigger. Maybe you could paint just the word Ortega across the front of the bottle and do it a little bit in like a fancy font or something and just have some fun with it. After I have that written, the Ortega written, I'm going to write the word taco underneath it. And then I am going to paint a little taco on the front of the bottle. If you wanted to make a specific, you know, mild, medium, hot, you know, whatever kind of taco sauce you want, you could actually, you know, write that in. I think there's some differences on the fronts of the bottles between the different ones, between the different spicy levels, but I'm not really for sure besides having it written down mild, medium, or hot. I know my husband is the one in my house that likes Ortega and he will only eat the mild. He's kind of, um, yeah, I got a medium once because I figured that's what he wanted and he told me that the medium was too spicy for him so apparently not but then after we have those little taco details done keep it simple I'm going to take some brown paint and add some splotches on the outside of my tortilla shells so that they have a little bit of kind of a texture to them because usually they get a little bit toasty in some spots more than others and then after that's done add some white paint to detail the sections of my lime slices and other than that I didn't do any other details on the things that are sculpted with acrylic I didn't paint, do any other painting on the tacos I just kept it all basically as it was with the acrylic and I'm going to be applying some gel sealer over my Ortega bottle to make it look nice and shiny and like it is glass and after that's done I'm going to take and just do a little bit of a um it's a no wipe top coat it's a or a matte top coat not a no wipe top coat it's a matte regular lacquer top coat over my 3d stuff that got some paint and then i'm going to cover my gel um my wire with gel paint so that it's got that ortega color to it and then you can also use that to add some ortega to one of the tacos and then down onto the plate gel paint does not need any top coat so once that is cured it is all done and these tacos are ready for consumption actually my yeah a lot of people get hungry with my videos and i can totally see why even just making them and doing the research for doing them and finding reference photos always makes me hungry so i apologize if everybody is starving after the end of some of these videos i will see you guys next time though bye